Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Abimbala Craig, and if this is your first time, you are very welcome. I do not know what this frame looks like, but I will not stand up to reframe because I'm tired. But I need to do this video. Um, please subscribe, please like, please share. Thank you guys for joining. I'm super excited. Um, this is pretty much me doing a is doing an update in terms of my health and where my life is at right now. Um, it's 10 years this year since I had my brain surgery. I know. Let's get into it. <laughs> in February, the 4th of February to be precise, 2014, I had my brain surgery done in Emory Hospital in Atlanta by Dr. Nelson Oyeshiku. He is one of the best neurosurgeons in the world, period. Now, before I talk about the surgery, I need to talk about what led me to this surgery. I'm going to put the medical term of what they call the kind of surgery that I had in the edit, but let me just go straight to the point. So sometime in 2013, I was always having headaches, like severe headaches. And I just thought, you know what, I was stressed out. By this time I was still working in a law firm. I was driving back and forth to the island from the mainland. I was still staying at my mom's place. And so in my head, I just thought, you know what, it's stress. Spending X amount of hours in traffic is not making sense, but I must be tired, I must be beat. At the same time as well, I'm always working out. So I was like, you know what, it's stress. It's Lagos, it's Nigeria, it's stress because one plus one is not adding up. And I, was, I, just, I just chalked it up to that. You know what I mean? And then um, a few weeks after, maybe like say a month, the headaches persistently continued. But one day I was lying down on my bed and I was in my nightgown and I remember getting up and I saw like a, like a map on my nipple area. And I thought, huh? That is weird weird there was light i remember so it wasn't a situation where i was sweating or anything and i was like of all places my nipple area this is weird but i was like okay you know what whatever i just ignored it two days after i noticed again that it wasn't only on the right it was also on the left and i thought what's going on so i literally go in front of my mirror and i press my nipple <laughs> and a white discharge comes out and i'm like huh wait what you guys this is exactly how I'm telling you how my brain was working. I was like, huh, what? what's going on here? And so I sit down and I pressed the other breast, the nipple, and another discharge came out. And I thought to myself, this is not normal at all. Now, the last time or the only people I know who milk come out of their breast are people who are lactating, right? Right? Who are pregnant, just had a baby. So I didn't get it. Typical. So I sit down and I typically do what everybody does when you find something that is weird. You Google, and so I Google it, and Google is like, yeah, if your breast, you're lactating. So I kind of figured, okay, yes, I was lactating, but then I knew I wasn't pregnant. So I couldn't understand why. So it's like, not pregnant, breast lactating, overload. And I was just like, I was saying things, and maybe you have a tumor resting on your pituitary gland, maybe you have a lump in your breast, and I was like, hmm. So sometime when I was in high school, I think it was in 20, 2000 and maybe 2000 and I had no clue my mic went off guys so what I was saying was I think it was in 2001 that I found out that I had a lump in my breast and I had gone and I had gotten it taken out thankfully it was benign so when I had read and Google had said something about you know lump in breast I assumed okay you know what maybe this lump had regrown again and so that was the issue with it but then over time I just couldn't understand why there was still the discharge, yet I couldn't feel a lump. It was just very confusing for me. And so at the end of the day, I just ended up telling my mom. So I'm going to let my audio continue with the rest. Sorry, the audio is a bit off, guys. Just manage me. But you get the gist. Eventually, I tell my mom because I felt very uncomfortable. She had a really good gynecologist who was a friend. So I remember us going to his office on the mainland there. And we pull up into his office and we sit down. And as soon as we sit down, he's like, ah, oh, big boy. Ah, you're still not lost way too. Mm -hmm. Honey, this problem that you're having, Sha, mm -hmm. is the weight, is the weight. If you lose the weight, it will stop. It's hormonal imbalance. This man, guys, 
I promise you, he's a professional gynecologist. He did not want to test, do any physical examination on me. He literally just looked at me and told me all these things. And I remember walking out of the office very upset. And I told my mom, I said, Mommy, this is why you want to come here. How can this man just look at me? And the first thing he says, is my weight. If I lose weight, everything will balance out. It's hormonal imbalance. Is he mad? Does he know what I've been going through for the past few months now? Mom is a bit more calm down. Don't worry. Now, in November of that year, my brother was getting married in America. So she's like, you know, when we go to the States, we'll just get a second opinion and just see what's going on. Bear in mind, guys, that this is like four years after my dad had passed. in November. And while we're in America, my mom calls her cousins and calls a bunch of people, pull strings up and down. I go to Northside Hospital in Atlanta, I will never forget. And I go there for a mammogram and an MRI. So I do the mammogram, I do the MRI, and again in my head, I'm still thinking, the worst that can happen is the fact that maybe this lump has regrown itself. Not one second did my mind flash to, ah, Bimbola. Maybe it is a tumor in your brain. Nah. Far from it. So it's lump, it has come back. Koburu. By the grace of God, it's non cantarous. That's what we might. And so I remember after the entire visit to the hospital and everything, they said they'll let us know when the results will be out. So we're in the airport on our way to Chicago for my brother's wedding. And I remember my mom's phone ringing and they asked to speak to me. And my mom gives me the phone. And I'm talking to them and they're telling me what the results are. And I remember just getting off the phone and I'm crying and I'm bawling. Mom's like, but what is it? And my mom didn't give me good news at all. I remember asking them first, when they first told me, they first all said, the mammogram came out clear. You have a tumor that is resting, a five centimeter tumor that is resting in your pituitary gland, which is costing your breast to lactate. The man said a lot of things and I just kept on crying. I kept on asking him, wait, wait, I'm in the airport right now. I'm about to fly to Chicago for my brother's wedding. Are you telling me that I can fly? Can I fly? Can I not fly? Are you telling me that if I fly right now and there's turbulence with the tumor rupture, I was going batshit crazy, you guys. No cap. No cap. No cap. No cap. And so he said, no, I can fly. I should just be careful. And I should just, I should, I should just take it easy. So I tell my mom everything. As soon as we land in Chicago straight, my mom goes straight into mommy mood. She not even playing around at all. She's like, okay. She calls her cousin, Uncle Patrick. We need another second opinion. And he's like, okay, Nelson is my friend. I'm going to sort it out. Okay, but have you called Emery? Well, okay, we're going to try and call Emery. He said, okay, you keep trying to call Nelson because he couldn't reach him. And I call Emery and they tell me that the doctor is not available until next year. And I'm like, huh? I came from Nigeria for a wedding. My intention was to go back to Nigeria. So I'm confused as to how you're telling me that I can't say doctor till next year. Make this thing make sense now, guys. Okay. Well. My uncle Shah calls like a few days after and he's like, once you guys are done with the wedding, you need to start making your way to Atlanta straight away. Nelson says he will see you, all that good stuff. So as soon as we're done with Chicago, I saw my mom get on our flight. We go straight to Atlanta. Atlanta, I see Dr. Yeshiku, and he tells me and he reconfirms everything. There's a tumor in your brain, and okay, these are the options. And so he tells me I have two options. Um, they can leave the tumor in there, and they can put me on steroids, but they don't know how long they're going to put me on steroids for. It might be all my life. And so the point of the steroids is that you take the steroids, and eventually the tumor starts to reduce. That's the prayer, but they can't tell how long it's going to take. So you're going to have to be on the steroids for quite a while. And I'm thinking, and I Google again, steroids, weight gain. I'm already like, listen, I'm already a big girl. Your girl is heavy. By the time I add steroids to this thing, ooh, I'm about to take over. I'm like, okay, what's the next option? And he's like, okay, the next option is surgery. And I'm like, sorry? And he's like, yeah, we take it out. And I'm like, okay, what are the implications? He's like, listen, it's brain surgery. Like every surgery, there are complications wake up after the surgery can be successful, but then you have one side of your body that is paralyzed. Everybody reacts to it differently. Some people wake up with speech impediments and it never comes back. Some people it does. Some people see twitch in their eye. So the truth is like every normal surgery, there are implications, but you need to decide what you want to do. And so I thought about it and I said, you know what? I want to do the surgery. However, can I go back to Nigeria, put my house in order and come back? Because when I was coming, I was coming to come and jai jai for my brother's wedding. This was not the plan. Shanu me. This was not the plan. Have mercy. And so he says, okay, no problem. So can we go ahead and schedule your surgery? 
And I remember this is November again, guys, 2013. And I said, okay, yes, you can go ahead. So they scheduled my surgery for the next year, 4th of February, 2013. <laughs> Let's accelerate now to February. I get into America towards the end of January. I am, I am, I am, I am a ball of anxiety. By the way, when I was leaving Nigeria, I did not tell my friends I was leaving. I didn't tell anybody I had brain surgery. I didn't tell anybody. Shing, bye. Like, God, please, I don't want to go for the surgery and die you. But I didn't tell anybody anything. Only my close family members knew what was going on. So time for the day of the surgery. They prepped me for everything. And I go in. And I remember the last thing they were telling me, oh, count backwards. Before you know it, I fall asleep. Next, next thing I know, I wake up, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. So are you willing me now for the surgery? And they're like, no, ma'am. The surgery is all done. And I was like, what do you mean it's all done? And they're like, yeah, it's all done. So the first thing I do instinctively is to touch my head. And I realize my hair is still there. And I'm like, no, no, no. Why do I still have hair? And they're like, oh, no. It was non-invasive. So they went in through my nose. So I remember the next day meeting the doctors. And they're like, oh, yeah. So we went in through your nose. This side of your nose, nose rails is wider than the other one now. So you have to be careful. You have to use saline salts to rinse your nose. There's going to be a bunch of cloth, blood, all that good stuff that's going to be coming out. You need to make sure that whatever you do, you don't cough. Whatever you do, you don't bend your head backwards. They gave me so many do's and don'ts. But I was like, you know what? God, thank you. Thank you. This surgery was successful. I am alive. They did not cut my hair. Even though by this time I was already excited for them to cut my hair. Because by this time I was already ready to go natural. Anyways, four days after, I started to feel very weird. And I couldn't explain what it was that was wrong with me. But I was, I just, I wasn't myself. I couldn't eat. I started losing appetite. I started losing weight. I, by this time when I was living in the hospital there, I put me on oxycod oxycodone. And so I was like, maybe it's the drug because it's a really strong pain med. So I Google side effects of oxycodone. And one of it, or a few, there were quite a few, but two things I was experiencing, right, was insomnia and then hallucination slash depression i remember i was seeing my mom and my sister sleeping at night and i'll just be sad i look at them sleep. i look at them their life no i can't sleep and i constantly still had headaches because again they had just finished surgery right so i remember just feeling very depressed very sad not being able to eat so i just thought you know what let me just get off the drug so i called the hospital and i tell them this and these drugs are making me feel a certain type of way i'm not happy about it they said okay but are you in less pain when you take it i said yes but the side effects it didn't worth it. Please, what can they do for me? And they said, well, that's the strongest. They can't give me anything stronger than that. So, except I want to go on Tylenol extra, extra. And I'm like, listen, I'll rather that. So, they put me on that. Obviously, that wasn't as strong as the oxycodone, so I was even in more pain. But I was less depressed, less anxious. But I still wasn't eating. So, 10 days into this, guys, I'd lost like 10 kg. Um, I was having serious headaches. I started throwing up by this time as well profusely throwing up and my mom didn't understand what had happened within that 10 days i'd gone to er like twice if you know america you know er visits are expensive just even generally the surgery itself but i don't want to talk about the financial side of things um and so i remember my last er visit and i was still throwing up and my mom was like you know what she needs to call dr nelson so my mom picks up the phone and she's trying to be Dr. Nelson, she can. By this time, they're doing a lumbar puncture. Guys, in one day, I had three lumbar punctures. Lumbar pu punctures are like, it's what they call spinal taps, which is where they, it's pretty much like what they do if they're giving you an epidural. So they pretty much tell you to bend, and then they try to take fluids from your spine. Now, they were doing this because after they had checked everything and they didn't know what was wrong with me, the doctors thought I had meningitis. And so I had three spinal taps, which was painful, as hell and i remember the third one and i was crying i was screaming i'd gotten i went off on the doctor i said you are trying to kill me here stop it now mommy tell him to stop my mom was like everybody hands off then my mom was able to finally call dr Ayeshiko and she calls him on the phone and she's like listen we're just coming from nigeria is it possible that maybe this girl might have malaria can they test Mbola for malaria and he was like oh hmm, that's interesting but okay no problem they test me for malaria guys and they found out I had malaria. So apparently what had happened was when you have surgery, right, your immune system drops. 
So apparently I already had the parasites in my body. And so after my brain surgery, my immune system dropped. And so the parasites took over my body. And long and short, they gave me like two pills. Two pills, guys. I drank the pill, I slept for like an hour, I woke up and I was famished. For the first time in almost 12 days, I was able to eat something and keep it down. It was during this time as well that um, Atlanta had that their snowstorm, that small two inch that they were shouting about. So everywhere was locked down. And so my mom decided that, you know what, they should move me from a private wing to a private wing with a chef. God will bless my mother. She will not want for anything, she will not lack. Ah, God will bless my siblings, my sister-in-law. When I say that they rallied around me, I'm not even joking at all. Titi then was in Atlanta, she was doing her masters. Like, the money that my mother spent to make sure that I was comfortable during those four days of that lockdown. Hmm. I was inside, I was with so chef was cooking food for me and my mother. My mother could barely eat. She was looking at me every day, just praying, 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 praying. Long and short, eventually I was released from the hospital and um, I was told I need to do five years of MRI every year and come and see the doctor to just make sure that, you know, there's no regrowth and everything. And like joke, like joke from five years, this is me now here, 10 years after. And I'm standing, I am healthy, I am alive, I am doing things that I did not think I'll be able to do. And it's crazy because I don't give God enough credit. And I don't appreciate how far God has brought me because I've seen things. And the things I'm talking about, guys, it's not trauma in the sense of, you know, somebody has broken my heart, someone has beat me up. It's not, it's just what God has brought me through. Because as much as I've never spoken about it, even with my family, I thought I was going to die. Not from the brain surgery, which is the craziest part. But during those during that, that period of the lumbar puncture, not sure whether I had meningitis, I literally thought I was going to die. And so when I came back to Nigeria, I remember the first thing I said to myself was, I need to form and have a level of discipline. And the one thing that I said was, okay, I'm going to start working out. I'm not working out because I want to lose weight. I'm working out because I want to be healthy. I want to at least be active. Because during the entire time in the hospital, they were always coming to come and check because I was obese. I'm not saying I'm not now, but that's what you should decide because I don't nobody care. Um, but I was just like, there were so many things that were going. They were checking to just make sure blood sugar level was normal, coming to just check fatty acid, my liver, checking to make sure that I didn't have any blood cloth. So I got back and I was just like, you know what? I need to just have discipline over one thing that I can control in this life. And that's how I started working out until today. It's the best decision I've ever made in my life. But I'm doing this video to thank God. I don't, I, I'm not a, I'm a born again Christian. And if you've been around me, then you know that I don't joke with God. I've had really hard times this past two years. Um, but some days ago, I literally sat down and the Holy Spirit reminded me, that people you have been complaining a lot to. Do you know what year this is? It's your 10th year. It's your year of rebirth. It's your year of pruning. It's your year of shedding. And as much as it's been painful and uncomfortable, I'm reminded that God did not save me 10 years ago for me to be ungrateful now. And so I just want to just come to just talk about my story, to talk about how God saved me, how he has been good to me, and to just tell women who are going through things that are similar. Pay attention to your body. Your intuition is not given to you for jokes. There's a reason why. Listen, listen to your body. It's important that we learn to advocate for ourselves. You know, when we sit down and I watch things and you hear women who are pregnant talking about how they told their doctor that this was what the issue was, or you hear women who are talking about how they, they think they had a lump and they were telling their doctor and they didn't listen and they had to be following up. Listen, check it, check it, check it, check it, check it. You just need to learn how to advocate for yourself. You need to pay attention to your body. If you feel something that was not there before, get it checked. If you feel that there's something that's going on within you that is not normal, go and see a doctor. Um, I tell this to my cleaner every time. Check your body, pay attention to yourself. 
Don't wait for your husband to tell you things or to give you permission to go. I need us to take control. I need us to pay attention. And if you're someone who has gone through something similar, don't be scared. Reach out to me. I respond to people that send me messages about similar things. I do. Not everyone, because sometimes I don't see things. But I respond. I know similar people who have gone through the same surgery and have not been the same. I want to use this opportunity to give mad love and shout out to Julius Abu. I remember the first and only time I met him. We were having a conversation and he heard me mention my surgery. And he said, oh, he'd had the same surgery as well. And he mentioned how it changed his life. And nothing has been the same since that surgery. In terms of his health and just in terms of just his overall, overall well-being. And I sit down here and I'm like, look at me. I'm That's why my mom shouts half of the time. I'm jumping up and down. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Because God gave me a second lease of life. And I don't want to take it for granted. Because not a lot of people have been able to bounce back. A poco doctor had a surgery that was very similar. And I thank God that he was able to overcome it. So I'm just here to give a shout out to anyone who's gone through something similar. And who is still standing strong. I'm here to encourage people to just say that, listen, God is good. To say that, listen, in this 10th year, you are not ready for me. You are not ready for me. I need to stop doubting myself. I need to shout more about the goodness of God in my life. Because God is good. God is good. My mom is going to see this video. And I'm going to use this opportunity again to thank her. My mom is a strong woman. She can be annoying. <laughs> but she has seen and gone through so much. She sacrificed so much for all of us. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, Titi. Thank you, Shomo. Thank you, Mumi. I'm so grateful for my little, little safe haven. He has to be calling up and down. Yes, there was only a few people that I told up my surgery as well. Even till today, when I talk about it, the way people react, they're like, sorry, you, you what? They're like, why, why do you say so casually? I'm like, because I have to, because all the glory belongs to God. That I can't even talk about it, it's the grace of God. So yes, I don't want this video to be long. I don't want to get emotional because man is cute. <laughs> and even though it's 1230, I got to go to bed. But um, yeah, I just felt the need to do this video to talk about things. I hope I was able to articulate things properly. I don't want to go into detail in all the medical and all the fees. And no, 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 no. God has settled all that. He did all. He did all that. So we've moved on from that. But I just want to thank God for the opportunity. I want to thank God for Dr. Nelson Oyeshiko. I want to thank God for every hospital because they took care of me really, really well. Even five years after I went to for all my checkups. They did good. And um, yeah, if you're not fortunate enough to have enough funds to be able to travel out, again, like I said, don't be scared. Apoko doctor did his surgery here. I remember even like a few years after my five year mark, I was still going and I was doing my MRI in um, McCure here and sending my results abroad. So I'm saying that to say, by the grace of God, God will keep Nigeria standing and the medical system will get better. There are people that are in this country that are doctors who come and visit and do consultations and they are working. All right, guys, um, my battery is dying and I'm hoping that this audio is okay. But if it's all over the place, you could take me as I am. I'm so grateful for you guys. I am grateful to God for life as well. So please like, please share, and please subscribe. All right, bye. Cheers, guys.